Okay, so this picture is about behaviorism. We all know what behaviorism is. It's like when you get to reward a student for something nice that he did or punish him in case he uh, or she uh, does not um, do something in the right way. Um, there's always the positive reinforcement and the negative reinforcement. And in this, uh, in this uh, learning theory, students usually uh, excel in doing uh, drills and practices over one certain way of doing uh, things. Now, how does this relate to the picture uh, Eva is drawing? Uh, there is the parachute, which, is, uh, which symbolizes that the student is hanging alone in the air and uh, that knowledge is parachuted uh, upon him. Um, that you can see as well, there's uh, only one landing place beneath him, which means that there's only one way of, of getting there. Uh, the kick, which is the, above the parachute, means that the, um, uh, the teacher has already gave him only one uh, push, but at the same time, the teacher is ready to kick the student back again in case he did not reach the, uh, the needed uh, end. Don't leave him. Okay, so from the behaviorism and from the distance learning, we went to the uh, period of cognitivism during the 1970s when the computer came along and there was a heyday of first uh, computer or technological systems. And here we can see an avatar uh, trying to um, control the learning <coughs> of people, and avatar is always happy and um, making happy faces and trying to support the person to get to the right direction and to have uh, self-regulation of, of his own and trying to support the people inside the box. And here are the people that are taking the commands uh, very happily and without questioning the orders of the, of the box in front of them. So we continue to the 1980s and with the constructivism um, approach and in this uh, I mean students must build knowledge within the, their pre-existing knowledge and Eva is drawing a student who who is trying to build to build up the bridge which uh, is the back of the pre-existing knowledge. So. Okay, so basically everybody brings his own backpack mm -hmm. of uh, pre-knowledge and together they build a knowledge wall out of the different bricks of their backpack. And then the other person who has different bricks can also see the bricks of the other person. So it's very nice way of learning. It is also a compilation because if someone is missing a brick, another person with a suitable brick can just compile the whole structure. Okay, so we all know by now what collaborative learning is and we thought um, with the help of Eva that we could draw uh, a diagram or, uh, an anime or a picture that talks about collaborative learning in a very explicit way. It seems that these children or students are connected to each other, to each other's, and uh, they are connected to the computer at the same time, which brings them, which brings them close, uh, closer to each other and to the computer. Um, collaborative learning then happens by social interactions among uh, the students themselves, and uh, it could be through the uh, the computer itself. Um, In this picture, you can basically see a group holding hands, what is probably re, uh, presenting the knowledge, with a computer. So it's a circle, and uh, it's a social circle, and everybody is wired, and also the computer is wired in this circle. And 
The main thing is let's get wired <laughs> and share the knowledge and uh, educate yourself in a very social way supported by technology. Yes, that's a human. <laughs> And that's a pen. And last one. <laughs> and let's get wired. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a radio. <coughs> so in this picture, we are talking about the future way and how collaborative learning uh, supported by technology is going to become. <coughs> And in these pictures you see different streets where research can go because we don't know exactly where we are going and how we are end up. And these two beautiful wings <laughs> are attached to a computer, as you clearly can see. And this computer flies through the different uh, streets of research but he hasn't decided yet which way he's going to fly because there are also sometimes, like you can see now, dead ends which are leading to nowhere and sometimes also there are difficult topics so you have to cross some bridges there you can see a beautiful bridge <laughs> So. As I mentioned, a lot of possibilities. And of course, on the streets there is the flying computer and the humans who are working with this technology. And this w these humans are going in one direction, but also others are going to the different direction. Because not all the research is always helpful or useful. So we never know where we end up, but at least we are going somewhere. <laughs>